The famous Five Monkey story was based on and inspired by the original experiment conducted in 1967 by Stevenson and colleagues. In the experiment, Stevenson trained adult male and female rhesus monkeys to avoid manipulating an object and then placed individual naive animals in a cage with a trained individual of the same age and gender and the object in question. This story best summarizes exactly how we can be influenced through social conditioning and, of course, conformity. So you have a group of scientists placing five monkeys in a cage and in the middle of the cage is a ladder with bananas at the very top. Each time a monkey went up the ladder, the scientists soaked the rest of the monkeys with the cold water. After a while, every time any monkey went up the ladder, the others beat up the one on the ladder. They didn't want him to go up. After some time, no monkey went up the ladder, no matter how bad the hunger or the temptation. The scientists then decided to substitute one of the monkeys. That is, this new monkey who was never exposed to what was happening in the past was immediately interested in going up the ladder for bananas but immediately the other monkeys beat this monkey up with repeated measures that is beatings the new monkey decided hey i ain't going up this ladder because i'm going to get beaten they then substituted a second monkey and the same thing occurred in fact, the first monkey, that is the first monkey substitute, even participated in the beating of the second monkey that went up the ladder. And if you were to ask this monkey, why did you do it? Oh, because that's how things are done here. Eventually, all of the five monkeys in the group were all substitutes. Not one of them ever received water being poured on them but yet they continued to beat up any monkey who attempted to climb the ladder for the bananas they basically had the information passed down to them yet never ever did they experience the water torture if you could sit down and ask these monkeys all the ones who beat up the individual monkeys who went up the ladder to try to get the bananas. Why did you do it? Their answer probably was, I don't know. This is how things have always been done around here. Have we seen this in our own society where people trying to live their lives, say over the last two or three years, got beaten up? or insulted, rejected, dare I even say discriminated against for choosing their own paths, for choosing what was right for them? Has the media been the manipulators, thus using the cold water? Take for instance these following scenarios. Let's look at guns. All guns are bad because they kill. Let's call them assault weapons and ban them. Well, the first murder involved a rock. Please refer to Cain slewing Abel. Should we have banned rocks? Remember, 
It isn't the object, rather the individual using the object who possesses the criminal intent. Hence the term criminal mind. What would happen if kitchen knives were used in a plethora of murdering events? Would they be called assault knives? If you failed a math quiz, would it be the pencil's fault? If you drank and drove alcohol and then killed somebody, would we call it assault alcohol? Or an assault minivan? Would they then be banned? Interestingly, some stats assert that there have been more experimental shot injuries. You know, that drug that has been administered over the last year and a half. And deaths and injuries caused by this have been more than gunshot injuries and killings. So would we then call these assault experimental drugs? This has been going on for decades through systematic conditioning and people being told the vision the media wants you to hear. The media has their agenda and people buy into their programming. So you have to ask yourself sincerely, honestly, and truthfully. Did you stand with BLM? You know, all lives matter. So did you always stand with BLM? or just when the media started showing them on the news? Did you do your own digging before and since then to see where the funding came from for this organization and also where the money has gone to? The thing that's been fascinating to me is that Black American leaders, so-called leaders, I hate to give them that name, but so-called people that represent Black communities that look like them are now engaged in new modern day slavery. They're now working against their own people. They're now siding with Big Pharma. They're now saying it's all right to poison um, another generation of Black Americans. It's all right to kill off another group of Black American children. It's all right. Now, we don't need the prison industrial complex. We have the Big Pharma complex now. And their number one mission is to create or, or attempt to push us back into a system that will create perpetual slavery. And I think all of us should be concerned about that. Did you stand or are you standing with Ukraine? If so, excellent. Which folks were you standing with actually? Those running the biolabs, the money laundering operations, or the non-Kazarians? After all, if you are going to stand with someone, you better stand for the right reason or you may be willing to fall for anything. Did you stand with the media to protect grandma and your fellow homo sapiens because we are all in this together? Or did you research what you were putting into your body? Can you honestly say that you put in way more time than you would shopping, say, for a house, a car, <laughs> or even hair color? After all, this is your body. And you have it for life. Did you mask up to save lives? I am sure you checked the boxes that those masks came from and read all of the disclaimers on them. And if they really truly did work or not. Spoiler alert. Check the instructions. Masks are one of my favorite topics because I think that they are such universal and obvious symbols and surrogate markers of compliance and control, more so than, than really anything else. Did you stay home to save lives? You know, two weeks to flatten the curve, or was that two years? Have you ever noticed, say, a certain trend? Whenever something is happening, people just can't help to identify with it. Well, that is, many can't help. Scream from the rooftops, or at least from their social media pages, that they are one of the group, doing their part, fitting in, being brave. Perhaps in their own mind, they're even being a hero. Things on the wayside that people aren't even noticing because they're fighting amongst each other. 
I don't know what the social media sites themselves intended to do. I mean, we can guess from their, their censorship and stuff, but it's really us that unified and divided. And it's really a matter of perspective. Guess what? This is called conformity. Monkey see, monkey do. If you were truly starving, would you stare up at the bananas and not get them because the others told you that you might get a little wet. So what's next? Do you stand with digital currency because it is cool? All of your friends are doing it because the media is telling them? Or how about living in a 15 minute city so you can fit in? Or perhaps getting a chip implanted in you because all of the other monkeys, I mean people, are doing it. But the whole point of the 15 minute city is that the World Economic Forum is essentially a, a socialist uh, Marxist cabal, which is trying, which believes that Marxism is going to work this time. And it's going to work because now they have the technology. So the 15 minute city is an expression of that. And what it is going to do is it's going to control people's movements. People are going to be tracked. They're going to have to pay tolls if they leave their 15-minute zones. Um, and, uh, but, you know, all, you're, you're going to be timed how long you're gone. Uh, they're actually going, they're talking about setting up technology. And this is part of the reason why they want people to have electronic vehicles, electric vehicles, is that if you go, if you go outside of your zone, they'll be able to detect that and actually shut down your car. You're seeing everything explode in terms of prices, but it's all the prices of everything right now is fake, just like the money. It's just that people don't realize it, but they soon will. For those who believe in evolution, boy, you really haven't evolved too far past the ancestry intelligence bar, nor will you ever when you keep watching the mainstream news and media. The moral of the story, the five monkeys experiment teaches us that we need to constantly be challenging ourselves and doing the research ourselves and look at things, question things that don't always feel right and avoid using any excuses that this is the way things are. It's always been that way. Or we've always done it this way because people tell us to do it that way.